Ah yes, Dark Souls 2, honestly my favorite game in the trilogy. This isn't even a joke. I actually really enjoy playing this game. I just really enjoy how much variety in areas and colors the game has, how many weapons the game offers that are actually good and useful, and adaptability. Oh boy, I love me some adaptios for breakfast. I did a few challenge runs in this game, Broken Sword, Shield Only, but I never did a level 1 playthrough, so I decided to just do that. Because I hate myself and I forgot that adaptability is a thing. And yes, I have recorded everything about this at the midway point. But let's get through the rules real quick. As per usual, no leveling up, no Jesus exploits, no bugs or glitches, and I'm allowed to use everything the game allows me to obtain. And with that, I would say, let's start with this run. I started the game, ran towards the character creation screen, picked woman, cause woman is superior to man cause they have more letters, and picked the deprived as my starting class, combined with the healing verse as my starting gift for some extra healing items. I broke the wagon for the torch and headed towards Majula. I gripped everything could, including the Esters, some homeward bonus, and Esther shard. With that I ran towards the forest area. On the way, I got the chest with the human effigy and extra homeward bonus and headed towards the next bonfire. With that I ran past all the enemies, ran up the stairs and up the ladders and climbed the next bonfire. There I ran up the stairs, broke the door and picked up the axe, one of the few weapons we are going to use. It requires me to use two-handed, but that's okay. I popped some salts to buy a firebomb and blew up the wall for an early shortcut. From there I went down the tree roots towards the cave. They got some human effigy and met and talked to Kale for the house key. And then I killed him. This is actually important as your death drops Kale's helm, which gives me two decks and one endurance while equipped. With that I bonded out and headed towards the last giant. Here I realized our biggest issue of the run. I am incredibly squishy. Almost everything can kill me quickly. Once at the elevator, I opened the shortcut and went down towards the first boss of the run. This boss is pretty easy, just stick to one foot, wait for it to raise it, dodge the slam and attack it. When it rips out its arm, stay behind it and close to the feet and repeat the process. With that we got the last giant down. I bonded back to the bonfire and bought the key for Leningrad's workshop, one lockstone and a bright bug. This combined costs 10,000 swords, which gives us the silver snake ring plus one from the merchant. With that I also went to pursue. Here's how to make this fight easy. Head into the arena, run to the left, stick to the right side of the barrel. Once it gets ready for the charge attack, run faster towards the ballista. Use it, and the boss is almost dead. Use it again, and you have it. That said, I was unlucky in my run, and the pursuer got to me faster than usually. The steamer hits and went down. After that I became egg and had the lost best style. There I popped the chests for human effigy and done ammo. I also picked up a large tight night shard, popped another chest for the antiquated key and wetted up the ladder for one more large titanite shard. I then ran down the stairs, pushing the barrel. Nice and sat down on the bonfire. I popped every chest for arrows, my large titanite shards and normal titanite shards. I gave the blacksmith the ember to finally get him out of unemployment. I also bought two large titanite shards to kickstart his career and walked back to Medulla. They opened the blacksmith's door, popped the chest for a free bow, bought a mace and upgraded it to plus 6. We can use this one two handed. I also went into the house for a lockstone and an aster shard. With that we can continue to hide this tower. Oh boy, I love this area. Our objective here is fairly simple. Kill everything inside. I popped up right butt to make things a bit easier and headed towards the dragon which I quickly. This gave me the watch dragon palmer, which increases item drop rates. 
very handy for later. I also killed Fake on Stone for some extra salt. This fight is fairly simple due to its simple attack pattern. After that, I headed towards the next boss and picked up the Ring of Binding. I tried at the Dragon Rider the way to get him to fall off the area, but I messed up the timing and just did it another way. After that, I headed back to the things betwixt. They opened the gate blocked by a stone guy, headed down the hall from the laser shop, and went towards the two fairies. Killing them is fairly easy. Bait them on the bridge, make them attack, and eventually fall down. With them dead, we can return to the character creation ladies and get the most broken thing of the run. The ladle. Having the ladle in my off hand gives me 1 vitality, 1 endurance, 2 adaptability, and minus 1 dex. Back in Majula, I picked up the silver cat ring. We have like a good sim and paid the fee to enter Huntsman Copia. I ran past the absurd amount of enemies, claimed the bonfire, and headed past the first bridge to lower the second bridge. Past all the enemies, I faced the skeleton lords. This fight is fairly easy if you don't try to rush them. Just take one at a time and deal with the mobs that spawn after their death. One of them spawns with some bone wears, so it's important to be extra careful. Oh, and you can backstab them! Didn't know that. With the boner lords dead, it was time to enter the harvest valley. There I talked to a cleavage lady and equipped the cat ring to jump down to get into a poison gas for two tired night chunks. I ran off the poison gas, up the ladder to Paramount's Booba Lady, and used the lever to open the gate and enter the one fire past it. From there I just ran past everything and ended up at the hut. This fight is weird as I for the first time saw its actual moveset, but it's fairly easy to just hit once or twice, dodge its attack and repeat until it's dead. After that, I grabbed the next bonfire and went into the enemy onslaught. This area sucks. You can't just run past everything. Instead, I just took out all the enemies, climbed up the ladder, and grabbed the next bonfire. Before resting, I turned my torch and burned the windmill to remove the poison and bossery, moved on past all the enemies and poison pots, and joined the hidden bonfire. From there, I went into the room across the bonfire area with a mimic, slapped it, and ran out of it. The mimic died from all the poison pots, and I can get my war cook. This one gives me a plus 5 dex, but decreases my adaptability by 3. With that, it was time for our next boss. Mitha is fairly simple. Just dodge attacks, watch out for a head throw, and try to stay close to him. With that down, I was able to enter the Iron Fortress, my actual favorite area of the game. At Iron Fortress, I got lucky and got invaded by Dennis, who is smacked so hard that he questioned his existence. I entered the fortress and headed straight to the merchant, where I bought a fragrant branch and some charcoal or pine resin to hit 10,000 souls to get the golden snake ring plus one from the merchant. With that, I returned to Majula and headed towards the forest. I de stoned the pyromancy merchant, ran past the enemies, and joined the next bonfire. I head into the forest, bonked the tree to make weird noises, and popped the chest to yoink the Chlorentine ring plus one. With that I headed the next bonfire, and ran straight through the area to Nashika? Nashika? How the hell did you say that? Naika. Anyway, she's pretty dangerous, so I only attack her when she loads her stingers. This makes sure that I have an easy time attacking. When she digs down, I just head to the stone platform to be safe. With her down, I headed to the door of Pharos and yoinked the bonfire there. I ran past the drunk dwarves, yoinked the crystal lizard for the large tight knight shard, and headed into bright stone cove Zeldora. There I slept on the watch dragon palmer, the traveling merchant head, and the golden snake ring for maximum drop rate up. There I killed some of the peasants for the outfit, which gives me a plus 6 adaptability, and minus 3 intelligence. Who even needs to be smart, am I right? With that equipped, I headed to the congregation boss fight, just killed the big casters, and then the small guys. With them done, it was time to get into spider zone. There I slept on the cat ring, threw myself off the cliff to kill the crystal lizard for Titan Knight Chunk, killed one of the spider humans to get another Titan Knight Chunk, and killed the crystal lizard for two large Titan Knight Chunks. There I dropped down, 
headed straight into her empty building with a large Titanite chunk. And headed into Needlefield for three Titanite chunks, a Titanite shark, and a slab. With them in hand, I bone an Ode, headed to the Blacksmith, and bought the Rapier and upgraded it to plus 10. With that, I went back to the Iron Fortress. I got invaded by Fencer Sharon, who I stabbed so hard that she regretted her life decisions. After that, I ran through the first room, lowered the bridge, and climbed up the ladder in the far back to pop the chest with a life ring plus one. And dropped down the bridge to turn off the furnace to get through the door. Once up the ladder, I went up the second ladder and killed a samurai and a turtle. There I went to the side room to use a lockstone. I equipped the bow and hit every enemy once to bait them into the fire or to finish them off one by one. Afterwards I continued and grabbed the bonfire in front of the boss. With that I headed into the Iron King fight. Again, a simple boss. Wait for it to hit the floor, hit its hands and hide behind the wall whenever it spits fire. Repeat and it's down. I also headed back to the Crestfallen Retreat, equipped the Cat Ring and dropped down and ran past all the lizards to get the second DSC key. I headed back into the Iron King Arena and entered the second DSC. There I ran to the far back side of the entrance area and going to the Dexterity Ring so I can one hand the rapier. With one major boss down, I decided to tackle the easiest out of the four and headed to the Ladder Merchant. I never expected to buy a ladder in a Souls game. With that, I headed down the hall, past the Taliban, found a second set of ladders and into the gutter. Or as I like to call it, Australian sewers without water. Here is our wall straightforward. Run past the enemies through the fort gate at the far end of the area, head down the ladders and use a firebomb to break the pods so that my equipment won't break. With that, we can enter the Black Gorge. Here, I yoinked the bonfire and headed straight to the boss. I also got invaded, but I can just ignore that. The Rotten is a very easy boss. I used some of the Gold Pine Resin to increase my damage and stabbed a chubby little boy while dodging his heavy hitting but slow attacks. With the Rotten down, I headed back to the spider area, popped a torch, and headed past the spiders, up the ladder, and across all the spider webs. The spiders stay away from me as long as I hold the torch. Heading into the Freya fire with the torch means that these small spiders in the arena won't get close to me. Freya Oval is a weird boss. She got two heads. God, I can see the perverts already drooling all over her. With some very easy dodge attacks, but the hitbox is Giga Chang. After a bit of back and forward, Freya went down and I was able to join the second last major bonfire. It is time to return to Hydra's Flame Tower. Here I went past the Dragon Rider Arena, down the stairs, Pop that chest for bone or dust. And I did down the elevator. At the no man's wharf, I popped my torch. Ran up the stairs, went past the what are these supposed to be? Spider monkeys? Dark dwellers or dark stalkers. Spider monkey-like creatures. Also known as dooters? What? Past them, I lowered the level and headed into the ship for the Flexile Sentry. Here I rushed the boss as fast as possible due to the room filling with water, which is going to heavily limit my movement. With them down, I decided to become a captain and headed to the other entrance of the Lost Bastile. At the Lost Bastile, I moved on and dropped down where the barrels are. Opened the door with the antiquated key we got at the very beginning and ran into the kinky cage to get up. There I ran past the bridge to a fort gate, ran up, popped the bonfire and headed down past the flexile sentry clones into the lost center fight. I didn't bother with turning on the light as I respect her wish not have her eyes burned by light. Her attacks are hard but are very easy to dodge and with a bit of poking she went down. With that we cleared all four major bosses. And with that, it was time to head past the Winter Shrine and into the Drang Lake Castle. There, I slapped two mobs to open the gate, bought some repair powder, and headed down the ladder for the bonfire. 
I could have mobbed to open a correct door, headed up the stairs, and got invaded by the Dark Usurper, who I poked so hard that I questioned the existence. With that, I headed it into the Twin Dragon Rider fight. This one is easy, hit the Dragon Rider on the ground, dodge the arrows, and repeat for the second one. With them down, I continued past all the enemies and activated the elevator to the Mirror Knight. This one hits like a truck, but sticking to its left side makes it manageable. Just don't hit the shield, be aggressive and use the time window where it summons an extra NPC, or some extra damage, and it goes down. With that it was time to head into the lake of Amala and... Oh god. Why did they not remove this entire lake from the Scholar's version? God no. The first bit of it is manageable. Run past everything as quickly as possible to get to the first bonfire. Then I took care of some casters, equipped my bow to bait one of the stone knights and ran past it. Then I took care of every enemy on the way. There are so many casters in this area that I had to take it extra slow and careful since they can snipe me across the map. For the melee guys, I grabbed the bow and baited them out one by one as well. With them done, I was able to get past the foregate into the next bonfire. From there it was time to squish the bug, head to the left side of the area and into the next boss fight. I can't take this thing serious, it's just a foreskin frog, like it's just putting out its tiny w Demon of Song sucks. It's not hard, but it just hits like a truck and can potentially one-shot me. But with a bit of patience and carefulness, it went down. With it done, it was time to enter the Undead Crypt. This area is fairly simple as we don't need anything from here. No is there anything super dangerous. Just got past the area, past all the enemies and into the Valstadt fight. This one is a tough nut. Weird lingering hitboxes, lots of health and the potential to one-shot me. With a few attempts, Valstadt went down and it was time to climb the King's Ring. Well, it's time for the boring part of the game, Aldi. Oh wait, sorry. Um, Aldea's key. So, let's get this done quick. I went in, de-stoned the chonker on the staircase, ran through, passed all the doors and went straight to the dragon. It's just like a dragon on a bridge. Stick to its feet, dodge on the stump. Easy. Why does this boss even exist? In the dragon I across all the bridges and reached the dragon fortress. There I ran past all the mobs and talked to the dragon to be able to enter dead giant memories. Back at the crest farm retreat, I headed to the mandatory giant fight. This one is similar to last giant. Stick to the feet, dodge its storms, and stab it till it's dead. With that, we can head towards the final bosses of the run. Well, here we are, the second last boss of the run. And not gonna lie, this boss took longer than recording the entire rest of the run. The throne defender and watcher drove me insane and broke me. And I swear to the gods, I'm so sick of those two. Like, it's not even a hard fight, it's just a tedious fight with a lot of RNG factors to it. But let me explain, two cover each other very effectively. The defender has more health and sticks closer to you, while the watcher is squishy but very fast and high damage. You can see which one is more likely to attack you by if they have their shield lowered or not. The Watcher got a huge attack range with a massive lingering hitbox. Both buff themselves when below 50% health, which can straight up one shot me. If one goes down, the other one shortly after attempts to revive them. I have nothing nice to say, those guys suck. Now the hardest fire of this one for me. After hours of trying, I got them down though, and all I can say is that I was lucky on that run. With the throne guardians done, it was time for the final boss. Nashandra! Nashandra's way too easy. Like, you just stick to her, dodge her heavy attacks, and that, that's about it. Sometimes she spawns through the weird puddles that pop out of the ground. You can just stab them, and that's it. They can curse you, but... Curse doesn't one-shot you, so it just takes you to health not really heavily, but... It also goes down really quickly, so you don't really have to bother with it too much. Just, just get one of them down. You're good to go. And with a bit of fire arrow, dodging a lot, the Chandra went down. And there we have it, Dark Souls 2 at Solar 1. This run overall was pretty fun, but also a little bit frustrating. 
a lot of the early parts were really really easy while a lot of the late parts just turned out to be one shots and really really annoying enemies or bosses. That said, I'm still glad I did this for once finally. And I'm honestly always a little bit sad when people down talk this game. It had a lot of unique things, it has a great area and color variety, and I appreciate a lot of the bosses. That said, a lot of the bosses are just copy paste or trash mobs, and I wish they would remove them. That said, it was still a fun run, and I highly recommend doing it. If you're new to the channel, give a like and subscribe, and check out my Twitch if you want to. There's a high chance I'm live right now, so go check it out if you want to. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see each other hopefully with the next video. Bye for now.